Welcome to New Money, where each week we profile some of China's most successful businesses and aspiring entrepreneurs. This week, we go behind the scenes into one of China's busiest restaurants and try to understand how one man created a gourmet empire with over 80 eateries across the country. A typical Thursday evening at Wang Fujing Street, one of Beijing's oldest and most symbolic commercial streets, just a mile east of Tiananmen Square. Chain restaurant's grandma's home began its evening business hours ago. This is Grandma's Home's very first Beijing branch, which opened in 2011. It has become so popular that customers usually have to spend hours waiting before a table becomes available. There are still about um, 30 tables of people in front of us. Two hours. Two hours. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> I was prepared to come to Grandma's. I knew I was going to wait for a long time. If we hadn't chosen to share a table with other people, we would have had to wait for two hours. But since there was this big table available for sharing, we only waited for half an hour. We lose nearly 50% of customers during their waiting. For example, if we distribute 100 queue numbers, only 50 of them would actually eat in our restaurant. The other 50 would go somewhere else. But the high loss rate of customers doesn't prove to be a concern for Grandma's home. A 2014 surveillance tape shows within the first 15 minutes of its opening on a Saturday afternoon, the restaurant became a full house. This medium-sized table in the center of the screen turned over once between 5 and 6 p.m., twice between 6 and 7, thrice between 7 and 8, and four times between 8 and 9 p.m. Such popularity is no stranger to the chain restaurant's 85 stores across the country. The company opened 50 restaurants, including Grandma's Home and other brands, in 2014 alone. Established in the southeastern Chinese city of Hangzhou in 1998, Grandma's Home quickly expanded to the northern and southern parts of the country in a decade. We now choose to be in commercial complexes across the country. This is because consumer spending has changed from being single-purposed, like eating at a restaurant on the side of a road, to multi-purposed, like shopping, grocery shopping, entertainment and eating all at the same place. People typing their phone numbers and preferred table sizes through a calling system, similar to those at hospitals or banks. They would then receive a text message two tables before their turn. But work behind the calling system is completely done by human beings. 23-year-old He Yashun is already one of the head waitresses at this restaurant, as shown by the red scarf. Blue shows customers have either paid the bill or haven't ordered yet. Orange shows their orders have been taken. Red, like this one, 2 hours and 57 minutes, indicating this group of customers have been sitting there for nearly 3 hours. A high turnover rate is closely linked with low prices and a variety of choices on the menu. The most expensive dish is under 60 yuan, or $10. It's about um, 100 yuan for the three of us. It's uh, 158 yuan. When we opened Grandma's home 15 years ago, my targeted consumers were households. In our generation at the time, young people really didn't have places to go. Restaurants were all big hotels and only had big tables. If you want to take a guy out on a date, there wasn't a restaurant for you. So I thought I am going to take over this market. 51-year-old Wu Guoping stays young himself. From his own fashion to his restaurant's decoration, the founder puts in a lot of effort in learning what young people want. 
fact, the progress we made in the last three years was equivalent to the total development we made in the previous 12 years. Why has it been so fast? Because consumers have been changing fast. In more fashionable Chinese slangs, they've turned from tu hao to diao si, or from the Beverly Hillbilly to the Jocular Loser. People at my age used to compete and show off who could afford a more expensive dinner, but now it's an era of showing off your individualities. Well, many major Chinese cities are very saturated markets for the restaurant business these days, but some managed to make their seats packed the moment they opened their doors. Today, we discuss chain restaurant Grandma's Home and why its business model is so successful. Joining me today to talk about today's business profile, Professor Jia Ning from Tsinghua University's China Business Case Center, where she is a deputy director at that center. Professor, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. So you yourself have actually tried to eat at this restaurant, but to no avail, I heard. Yes. I tried a couple of times but failed. This particular sector has been growing extremely rapidly over the last decade, due largely to the rise of the Chinese economy, especially uh, the growth in the domestic consumption sector. So uh, there are several defining features about this particular uh, customer group that Grandma's Home is targeting. So let's check out some graphics. One is this is the largest and uh, most stable consumer base, and they do re incur repeated visits. At the same time, you know they tend to be less uh, time sensitive, but they also have very limited budget on each meal. Mm -hmm. right? And for young people, they tend to change their uh, preferences and tastes quite often. Right? Right. So in essence, this is a consumer group that likes to dine out frequently at a decent restaurant, but at the same time, they don't want to or they're not willing to spend too much uh, on each meal. Right? So to target this particular customer group, Grandma's Home must position itself as a low price but high quality dining experience leader in the market. Mm -hmm. So the key elements uh, surrounding you know, the setting up a restaurant, including location, pricing, and environment or interior design. Right? So in terms of location, uh, the restaurant must choose its location at high traffic you know, areas, like shopping mall would be an ideal, right? where uh, there's high population density. Mm -hmm. In terms of pricing, it has to be highly uh, affordable. Right? So I think the most expensive dish offered by Grandma's Home is just uh, under 60 RMB or $10, and right. which is very you know, competitive. Yeah. And lastly, in terms of interior design, um, you know, the restaurant must provide customers with this homey charm or you know, this upscale feel. But at the same time, uh, the restaurant needs to be designed in such a way to allow for maximum space utilization and high right. table turnover rate. Now, speaking of location, and not only is it in a very busy shopping mall, but also it's in a very busy touristy area as well, Wang Fujing Street, uh, one of the must-see places if you're ever in China's capital. And you mentioned also, Professor, changing tastes, changing preferences, and again, lots and lots of choices. Mm -hmm. Do you think the business model for Grandma's Home is actually unique enough so that demand for its business model and its services uh, are actually not that easily replicable? You know, Michael, I personally would not say that uh, this business model is unique. I mean, you know, the core idea about delivering high price value, you know, product and services, it's really not a new idea. So the business idea of Grandma's Home is straightforward, it's easy to understand, but the replication may be very difficult because when it comes to, you know, restaurant business, at the end, it's all about execution, commitment, and attention to details. And these are not always easy to achieve. Do you think that it has any weak points that it should address uh, in terms of what priorities it needs to take care of, its Achilles heel? You know, um, I don't know if this is considered a weak point of the business model, but what I'm worried about is whether or not Grandma's Home will be able to continue to impress its customers and live up to their rising expectations. This high customer expectations sometimes can actually translate into added pressure you know, onto the companies because the higher the consumer expectation, the more disappointed they will be if you fail to live up to that rising expectation or you know, if you fail to dazzle, continue to dazzle your customers, in which case they'll become even more disappointed and mm. walk away and perhaps will never come back. We've talked about the business model. We're going to see now how the grandma's home, this restaurant actually executes this model. Sure. We're going to talk about that coming up next. Mm -hmm.